So what are we doing today? Well, this morning, for you guys, evening for me, we're gonna look at three more of those knives that Jared sent me in that big box of stuff that he sent over the weekend. So Tuesday morning for you guys, Saturday evening for me, let's turn this around and take a look at it from above and get into these knives. But first, you guys know what time it is. Turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music. guys let's get into this we got three knives here let's go ahead and pick one eeny meeny miny mo looks like this one so let's get these other ones out of the this way and see what this is i don't know yet because i haven't looked i am going into these as blind as you can nope nothing so obviously a can sep let's see mm, like that it's front flipper only doesn't have any other means of deployment so i'm not a big fan oh there we go there's a name uh, an act Accipiter, accipiter. So this is the Cancept Accipiter. Um, good looking knife, really comfortable in hand. I just, ah, here we go. Top flipper only. It's not bad though. I mean, really that top flipper is not too bad. It's in a position and this is a big enough knife that I can get on it. Yeah, I guess that's not horrible. I don't dislike that so horribly. So what are we looking at? It looks like titanium green canvas micarta. That's good looking micarta on that. I like that a lot. Looks really weathered and stuff like that good looking blade nice drop point clip point style blade flat grind pretty good looks like it's got a little bit of a recurve right here on that edge that makes it a pain to sharpen i can tell already that they didn't do a real good I, I hate when they do this they make a really good looking knife and then they have that in hand pretty comfortable uh jimping's not real aggressive but the knife overall is pretty good the pocket clip is in a position where I can feel it. It doesn't feel hot spotty. We'll see how it feels when I do some cutting. Um, typically cutting is when you find out real easily how that feels in hand, especially like if you're cutting wood. Uh, I have a broomstick that I do feather sticking and stuff on. Nice hardwood to see how it feels. Not too thin behind the edge, but also it's not real thick. I'd say it's kind of in that Goldilocks. I got the garage door open because it's kind of warm in here. Um, all of a sudden, I think it's because I got the lights on. What I was saying is it's it's just about in that Goldilocks zone. It's not too thick, not too thin. Feels really good. It does feel really good in hand. I like the feel on this one. Just about the right radius. Fills your hand. It's about the right thickness. Um, action on it. The Cansep knives are always solid when it comes to action. It's not quite fall shut. Just a little jiggle will get it home. Um, does not feel, as I see, this is my problem. I, when I do a, I, I treat it like a thumb stud and I get my hand in the wrong position and it, it hits my fat, beefy thumb that I got that big chunk of muscle there. So not a big fan of front flippers, really am not. I do like this recessed area, these little hollowed out fluted areas. Um, God, that, my card is so good. It looks like a worn canvas. Um, I like this a lot. If you're gonna give me a lanyard hole, I would appreciate, I'm appreciating all the companies that are doing this. Come up with an option that works really well, either a pin with a hole in it, like uh, some of the Artisan and the Chris Reeves knives, or a backspacer like this with a pin in it that you can run your lanyard up and through. Two reasons, it doesn't detract from the, the looks of the knife. And for the guys that do have lanyards, it, uh, it definitely, prevents your uh, lanyard from getting clipped. I do know that my uh, Sabenza, the one that's on my Sabenza has gotten clipped a couple times. Um, yeah, that's a really nice looking knife. I like how, I will say one thing about the front flippers, the flipper tab completely goes away. And so you don't have that intrusive thing um, as Nick Shabazz calls them, pocket peckers. I don't care so much, but I mean, I do like that clean look. If you give me enough room that I've got something here to act as a finger guard. I want something there, but not necessarily a big flipper tab sticking out. So yeah, that's a good looking knife. We'll see how it carries. We'll see how it feels after, you know, a few days of carry. We'll see how I like the, uh, the, the pocket. I hate the action on it. I hate front flippers. I wish it had thumb studs. Um, We'll see how that pocket clip feels after a couple days. Not really got any sharp spots. So there you go, there's your first one. The Cancept, what did I say it was, Accipiter? Accipiter, there you go. 
So there's your first one. Let's get the next one out and take a look Let's at get it. Get this opened up and see. Oh, that's a big boy. That's a big beefy boy. A lot of carpet. Man, that's that's not light at all. Anything in here? Nope. Nothing identifying it. That's a that's definitely a big chunky beast. Let's see. I do like the fact that the that the cutout for the uh, lock bar is on the inside. I do like that. Oh, it's Tucson. Uh, Tucson. Let's see. Is it marked? I might not even have to look this one up. T S. 380, 14C28N. I like that steel. That is a big, beefy looking knife. It, do you know what this reminds me of? There was a, a knife that Andy over at Half Face Blades made that had a really similar blade shape that came down real thick and bulky. Uh, not real, not, not saying thick and bulky, but like a big, broad blade with a relatively blunt tip. It's a good looking blade. Um, probably going to be pretty useful man 14c it takes a terrifying edge um it's it feels heavy in hand when you first open it but or when you first pick it up closed it definitely feels but then once that balance that balance is just about perfect i like that a lot heavy blade light handle you get a little bit of weight forward carbon fiber on this is done really really well it's machined in together really nicely you do have a lanyard through but it's also in through the backspacer. So if you're a lanyard guy, you can see your lanyard is protected the whole time. It's inside the backspacer. I wish they had just kind of done what we saw on the last knife on that can set. Um, big aperture on this in an area where you can get at it pretty easily because it is a big knife. So it's not that hard. Uh, the video that I did earlier today, uh, one of the knives had a pretty tight squeeze to get in. It was that Royal. It was the Kaiser Royal. Um, I don't recognize this maker's design logo, but I'm sure we'll get it figured out in the in the uh, in the carry. And like I said, I like these scale overlays because you don't get a hot spot here, almost like a liner lock, but more like a frame. It's like a frame lock with scales, but not quite a liner lock. You know what I mean? I mean, I guarantee you, you could qualify it as a, as a liner, but that you lose so much on sometimes on frame locks if it's not done well these liner locks and and then ones that are done like this you really don't get a hot spot there a sharp spot nice big broad blade it is a little thick though I and mean, i'm not gonna lie it is a little thick but it is comfortable in hand a lot of useful a lot of useful cutting on that pretty good belly right here nice flat nice belly right here there is a little bit of a thick spot sometimes you get that with these knives where they come up to the belly so there is a little bit of thickness here that you're you can feel the transition um sometimes that'll affect the thickness behind the edge at the very front so we'll have to keep an eye on that when we do it action on it's really good is it drop shut a lot of the two sons are oh yeah it's drop shut the only reason it dropped my finger got on the flipper tub drop shut not quite guillotine but definitely drop shut nice smooth action that's a big beefy that's a big beefy boy right there um yeah let's go ahead and uh this, what is this? The Tucson what? 380. Yeah, I'm digging that. It's not bad at all. Good carbon fiber. Let's go ahead and uh, get this one out of the way and take a look at the last one. Up. I have no idea what's in here yet, but I'm going to tell you it is heavy. I don't think that that's, this is, I don't think that's it because uh, I definitely had this knife in. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and open it up. Take a look. Oh, what is this? Is this a, is this a Sabibi? No, it's a Cansep. Another Cansep. What is this? Man, that's heavy. No wonder it felt so heavy. That's not a real big knife to have that much weight. What is this? The Prickle, the Max Tai Chuck. Tuck, I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher your name. That is, okay, that's unique and pointy. Almost like a Japanese style Tonto coming down, but not having the trans, it's, it's I don't know. It's a unique looking blade. It is very heavy. But it feels good. This is so comfortable in hand, really, for a thin knife. For a knife that's not very broad, um, it's nice and thick this way. It's not real broad. It's got a good weight. Typically, I like a little bit of weight forward, but that does feel good in hand. This reminds me of a small Japanese knife that was carried uh, back in the... It was like a... It, it was a secondary defense tool. It was like almost like an assassin's tool. This is a fun looking little knife. I like this. It is really comfortable in hand. S35VN, nice long thin blade. It is not horribly thick behind the edge. 
We'll have to see how it cuts. I, it does train. Okay, so I say it's not thick behind the edge, but you can feel it transition real quickly from the edge to here. I don't know. We'll see how that's going to do in the cutting action on it. It is a front flipper, but it's this is in a fashion where it's not horrible for me. Jerry likes to send me these front flippers that make me kind of change my position on some of these front flippers. Um, jumping on it's not horrible. The copper seems to be well done. That pocket clip almost disappears in your hand. I think it's just the way it sits in your hand. Uh, it might not be as comfortable for some other people. This reminds me of the Quaken. This reminds me a lot of the Quaken along those same design lines. Uh, copper or brass, not 100% sure which yet. Um, I'm gonna say it's probably copper. Nice stone wash, nice pocket clip. Liner is done really well, nice and clean. Uh, it's flush. I don't feel any high spots. Pocket clip is not at all loose. Feels good in hand. Nice hardware. I, I dig that black and copper. Is it fall shut? No, you got to give it a good jiggle, but that's fine. You know, uh, that, that whole fall shut thing is kind of a gimmicky thing. Sometimes it's cool. I like it in my Norseman because not only is the Norseman fall shut, but it's really smooth. Um, nice profile. It's a good looking knife. I think of the three, this is my favorite ones of these, of the three we've opened today. Um, nice blade shape. I like how, okay. One of the things is the offset from the grind to the fuller where you have the fuller going completely horizontal and then the grind line intersecting and kind of sweeping up. Nice look on that. Nice and comfortable in hand. I think I'm going to enjoy this. We'll just have to see how it cuts and see if it's a real functional tool. One of the few front flippers that I'm not really having a problem with feels good in hand. Nice little thumb ramp. Wow, I do dig this. Um, yeah, let's not spend too much more time on this. We've got other stuff to look at uh, and I've got other videos to film. So let's turn this around and do some final thoughts. There you go, guys. There was three knives real quick, three minutes each. I think my favorite, as weird as it seems, is this uh, Kansut Prickle. Uh, it's nice and it's thin and it's pokey. It makes you want to give someone the prickle tickle. Guys, that's it on this one. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down, but tell me why so I can change it. I can't change it if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment. Hit the bell icon so you get notified of everything I do. I'm putting up two videos a day, Monday through Friday. It's a video and a video or a video and a live. Usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's an evening live. Sometimes there's videos on Saturdays and I'm doing shorts as well. Um, but if you don't hit the notification on your device, if you don't set up notifications on your device, you're not going to get any of that. So uh, other ways you can support the channel if you want. I have a membership down below. It's all tier-based, uh, different benefits for different tiers. Pick a tier that suits you best, gets what you want out of the membership. It supports the channel. It supports what I do here and makes it possible for me to do all this stuff. But regardless of tier, remember everyone saves $5 on my sharpening service and everyone gets access to my Gilded server. It's a lot of fun. We hang out there and chat. Um, other ways you can do it, I have affiliate links down below. You saw I now have a Blade HQ affiliate link. Hopefully you guys are gonna be able to utilize that. That's a good one because Basically, almost everything you're going to see on the channel is available there. But there are other things down below as well. EDC items, tools, sharpening stones, all kinds of stuff. Take a look at the affiliate links. Doesn't cost you anything. And they give me a little bit of it when you check out, but it doesn't cost you extra. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. We've talked about that a bunch of times. I've got a coupon code for you, Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp. Saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me a picture of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in a video. Guys, that's it. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. It makes it easier to moderate the videos. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you same bat time, same bat channel tomorrow.